John joins us now. He is a behavioral scientist and author of You're Invited, The Art and Science of Cultivating Influence. Uh, John, appreciate your time tonight. You lay out a bunch of reasons why this is not sustainable over the long term. You talk about trust. You talk about belonging. Can you explain why this is not forever? Uh, well, first of all, the big problem is that it's incredibly difficult to build trust at distance. There's something called the Allen curve, which says that our communication grows exponentially the closer our desks are. And once people are out of sight, they're out of mind. And so those spontaneous connections don't happen, and people just don't develop the same level of trust and belonging. You the bigger issue there. Oh, I was going to say, you point out that you say work from home may be too convenient, but you're probably being listened to by a bunch of people who have been working from home for whom the convenience has been the, the total selling point. <laughs> One of the big issues is that if you have a short commute, it actually gives you an opportunity to think through ideas, learn, uh, explore new topics, and gives you a transition period that's essential to let your mind take a break. If you're on 10 hours straight of back-to-back -back Zoom meetings, it's, you have no problem, uh, time to process and no transition to your family. You know, we're talking about working remote, given the technology that we have today, but technology continues to innovate. There's new tools all the time. People now talk about VR and AR, tools that might actually place your image as a whole person in the office. Do you think with those kinds of uh, developments and, and new ideas that this could be sustainable over the long term? I think at best so far, what we can do is mitigate the, the losses. Uh, it's not going to allow you to have a side conversation at the water cooler or get some quality FaceTime when you bump into somebody in a hallway. We haven't solved for that yet. And the biggest concern is that the greatest predictor of human longevity is close social ties and belonging, right? Social integration. And when we take that away from people, uh, it's just not good for us. And it's not healthy for anything from company stock value to employee sick days that you can track to the levels of trust that people have. I wonder if, in aggregate, you think people who haven't been in the office for a year are out of shape in terms of playing office politics, relating to their coworkers as fellow human beings, and what advice you would give them as they try to sort of reintroduce themselves into this environment that's become a bit foreign. Uh, so I think that all of us are really kind of awkward right now. <laughs> we've, <laughs> uh, we've atrophied our social muscles, right? Like they've, they've just kind of fallen apart a bit. And so my biggest advice would actually be to lean into it, that when you finally go into the office, say, this is my first time being around other human beings in about a year and a half, I'm going to be really kind of awkward, frankly, and I hope you can be awkward with me and we'll get through this together. <laughs> Misery loves company. John, uh, important stuff. We really appreciate it. John Levy, thank you. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.